The year 2049 marked a pivotal moment in human history. For centuries, humanity gazed at the stars, wondering about the existence of others in the vast expanse of the universe. That question was answered not with a whisper, but with a thunderous declaration as the galactic empire made its presence known to Earth. A fleet of ships, unlike anything humanity had ever conceived, filled the skies one fateful morning. These colossal structures, with their sleek designs and pulsating lights, hovered silently above Earth's major cities, casting long shadows over the landscapes below. The world stood still, watching, waiting. The Galactic Empire, a coalition of alien races that dominated this arm of the galaxy, had finally turned its gaze upon Earth. Curiosity mixed with a hint of disdain colored their first broadcast to the people of Earth. The message was clear. Humanity was now under the scrutiny of a power far beyond its own. Initial reactions ranged from awe to fear, from disbelief to a rising sense of urgency. Governments scrambled to respond, while the public's imagination ran wild with scenarios out of science fiction. The aliens' advanced technology and their imposing presence suggested they were invincible, yet there was no immediate declaration of war, no demands. Instead, an invitation was extended to Earth's leaders for a meeting. The United Nations, acting as the collective voice of Earth, accepted. A delegation was quickly formed comprising scientists, diplomats, and military advisors tasked with representing humanity's interests. The meeting location was set in orbit aboard the flagship of the Empire's fleet. As the human delegation made its way to the rendezvous, escorted by a small fleet of alien ships, a palpable tension settled over Earth. This was humanity's first real step onto the galactic stage, a momentous occasion that was being broadcasted live across the globe. People from all walks of life watched as the human convoy approached the alien flagship, a symbol of the vast unknown that lay beyond their own world. The doors of the alien ship opened, welcoming the human delegates into a world of advanced technology and unknown intentions. Greeted by a committee of various alien representatives, the humans were struck by the diversity of life forms before them. The Empire's delegates ranged from towering figures to those who could look a human directly in the eyes, an array of colors and shapes that challenged the human concept of life. The initial exchanges were cautious but polite. The Empire expressed its fascination with humanity's rapid technological advancements and resilience in the face of adversity. However, it was also evident that they saw humans as somewhat primitive, not just in technology but in their understanding of the universe's workings. The Empire made it clear, humanity was now part of a larger community, one where their status was yet to be determined. As the meeting concluded, the human delegation returned to Earth with much to ponder. The encounter had opened a door to the cosmos, revealing both the incredible potential and the daunting challenges that lay ahead. Humanity was no longer alone in the universe, and the future was filled with uncertainty. But one thing was certain, the eyes of the world, and perhaps the galaxy, were now firmly on humanity. The days following the historic meeting were filled with a frenzy of activity. Governments around the world convened in emergency sessions, while news outlets and social media buzzed with speculation about humanity's place in the cosmic hierarchy. The general public's initial shock gradually gave way to a mix of excitement and apprehension about what the future held. It was during this period of uneasy anticipation that the Galactic Empire chose to reveal the extent of its power. One morning, as people across the globe went about their day, a second message from the Empire was broadcast worldwide, inviting humanity to witness a demonstration of their capabilities. The location chosen for this display was the Moon. Cameras and telescopes were pointed towards the lunar surface, broadcasting live to billions of viewers on Earth. The Galactic Empire's ships, previously just silent sentinels in Earth's orbit, began to move into a formation above the moon. What followed was a demonstration of technology so advanced it seemed like magic to the awestruck humans watching. With precise, controlled energy beams, the Empire's ships began to alter the lunar surface, etching a massive emblem of the Galactic Empire into the moon's crust. The process was completed in a matter of minutes, leaving a permanent mark visible to the naked eye from Earth. 
This act, meant to showcase their technological superiority, served a dual purpose as a subtle reminder of the Empire's capacity for alteration on a planetary scale. The reaction on Earth was immediate and varied. While some marveled at the display, others felt a chilling sense of vulnerability. The Empire's message was clear. Earth was under their watch, and resistance against a force capable of sculpting moons would be futile. In the wake of the demonstration, debates raged among Earth's leaders and its populace. Some advocated for immediate diplomatic efforts to secure a peaceful place for humanity within the Empire's structures. Others, however, saw the display not as a gesture of openness, but as an implicit threat. They argued for preparation, for humanity to strengthen itself against potential future demands or even aggression from the Empire. Amidst these debates, a new resolve began to take shape. The realization that humanity was not alone in the universe and potentially at the mercy of far superior forces galvanized efforts to close the technological gap. Across the globe, resources were allocated toward scientific research and military preparedness, sparking an unprecedented era of innovation and cooperation. However, it wasn't just the leaders and scientists who were mobilized by the Empire's display. Ordinary people from all walks of life began to view themselves as part of a larger human community. A sense of unity and purpose took hold, transcending old divisions. The Empire had intended to intimidate humanity into subservience, but their demonstration of power had inadvertently sown the seeds of a collective human identity, stronger and more resilient than ever before. As Earth adjusted to its new reality, eyes turned towards the stars with a renewed sense of determination. Humanity was down but not out, and the stage was set for the unfolding drama of an underdog striving to find its place in the galaxy. The challenge was immense, but the human spirit, renowned for its tenacity and ingenuity, was ready to face it head on. In the wake of the Galactic Empire's moon engraving, a strategic assembly was convened, drawing together Earth's finest minds and most influential leaders. The world had been shaken, but a defiant spirit was awakening. Among those gathered was General Elizabeth Santos, a tactician renowned for her unconventional approaches and unwavering resolve. She proposed a bold plan that would soon become the cornerstone of humanity's response to the Galactic Empire. The plan was audacious. A targeted strike on one of the Empire's outlying military outposts. The objective was not to provoke a full-scale war, a scenario in which Earth stood no chance. But to send a clear message, humanity was not to be underestimated. General Santos argued that the element of surprise coupled with humanity's rapidly advancing technology could level the playing field, even if just for a moment. Skepticism met her proposal. The risks were immense. Failure could lead to immediate retaliation, and the Empire's response would undoubtedly be swift and devastating. But amid the doubts, a consensus emerged that action was preferable to passive submission. If nothing else, the operation would provide valuable intelligence on the Empire's military capabilities and perhaps earn Earth a modicum of respect in the galactic community. The target was a relatively isolated outpost overseeing a minor mining operation on a desolate planet. Its defenses were formidable, but not impenetrable. Human intelligence had gleaned enough about the outpost to identify potential weaknesses in its security systems. The plan involved a multi-pronged attack, cyber warfare to disable communications, followed by a precision strike using the most advanced weapons in Earth's arsenal. Preparations were made in secret, with the world's nations pooling their resources and expertise. New weapons were developed designed specifically to exploit the known vulnerabilities of the Empire's technology. Elite soldiers from various countries were selected for the mission, forming a united human task force trained in the use of this new weaponry. As the day of the operation approached, a palpable tension settled over those in the know. The mission was humanity's first offensive move against a vastly superior foe, a David versus Goliath endeavor that would either mark the beginning of a new chapter in human history or a disastrous miscalculation. The attack commenced under the cover of darkness, exploiting a narrow window when the outpost's surveillance systems were weakest. 
cyber operatives launched the first salvo, sending a cascade of viruses into the outpost's network, effectively blinding it. Meanwhile, the task force, using stealth technology to approach undetected, positioned themselves for the attack. The ensuing battle was brief, but intense. The element of surprise worked in humanity's favor, allowing the task force to inflict significant damage before the outpost could mount an effective defense. Key facilities were destroyed and critical systems were disabled, rendering the outpost inoperable. As the human forces withdrew, they left behind a message, not in words, but in the audacity of their action. Earth would not bow down. The operation was a resounding success, far exceeding the expectations of its architects. The world awaited the Empire's response, knowing full well that the real battle was only just beginning. But for now, humanity had proven its mettle, showcasing a courage and ingenuity that would resonate across the stars. The aftermath of the strike on the Galactic Empire's outpost sent shockwaves throughout the galaxy. News of the audacious attack spread like wildfire, not just on Earth but across countless worlds under the Empire's domain. For the first time, the seemingly invincible Empire had been dealt a significant blow by a species considered by many to be a minor emerging player on the galactic stage. On Earth, the successful mission ignited a fire of pride and optimism. General Santos and her team were hailed as heroes, embodying the best of what humanity could achieve when united against a common foe. The operation had not only demonstrated Earth's growing military capabilities, but also its willingness to stand up to the Galactic Empire's intimidation. The Empire, for its part, was thrown into a state of fury and disbelief. Such a bold action by humanity was unforeseen, challenging the very foundation of their perceived supremacy. The ruling council convened in an emergency session with representatives of the various alien races that made up the Empire, voicing their outrage and demanding retribution. Yet, amidst the calls for a swift and crushing response, a voice of caution emerged. An elder statesman of the Empire, a seasoned strategist who had witnessed the rise and fall of many civilizations, urged restraint. He argued that the attack, while humiliating, offered valuable lessons about underestimating less technologically advanced species. Humanity's ingenuity and daring had exposed vulnerabilities that the Empire could no longer afford to ignore. The decision was made to reassess the Empire's approach to humanity and the emerging threats it posed. Meanwhile, covert operations were launched to gather intelligence on Earth's defenses and capabilities. The Empire began to see humanity not just as a rebellious upstart, but as a potential adversary worthy of respect. Back on Earth, the military and scientific communities were in a race against time, working tirelessly to reverse engineer captured alien technology and bolster Earth's defenses. The successful strike had bought them time, but also made it clear that the Empire would eventually come seeking vengeance. Earth's leaders understood that they were now engaged in a dangerous game of cat and mouse, where the stakes were nothing less than the survival of humanity itself. In the months that followed, Earth experienced a renaissance of technological innovation and unity. Formerly competing nations shared their most advanced technology and brightest minds, creating a global coalition with a single purpose, to defend Earth from the looming galactic threat. New weapon systems were developed and strategies were devised to counter the Empire's overwhelming firepower. The attack on the outpost had changed the course of human history, marking the end of Earth's anonymity in the galaxy. Humanity had declared itself a force to be reckoned with, ready to defend its freedom against any who dared threaten it. The stage was set for a confrontation that would determine the fate of Earth in the galactic community. As the galaxy watched, Earth prepared for the Empire's response, knowing that the battle ahead would be their greatest challenge yet but the spirit of defiance and ingenuity that had fueled their first victory remained undiminished, a beacon of hope in the face of overwhelming odds. The Galactic Empire's response to the unprecedented strike on their outpost was as calculated as it was formidable. With the shock of the initial human victory subsiding, the Empire shifted from a stance of incredulity to one of cold, focused retribution. A vast armada, the likes of which had never been seen, 
was assembled at the edge of the solar system, poised to deliver a decisive blow that would reaffirm the Empire's dominance and quell any notions of human defiance. On Earth, the atmosphere was tense with anticipation and dread. The unity and pride following the successful strike against the outpost were now tempered by the reality of the impending counterattack. Satellite imagery and deep space sensors relayed the scale of the Empire's forces, and the sheer number made it clear. This was not merely a punitive expedition, it was an invasion. The Empire's strategy was multifaceted. Prior to the main assault, they launched a series of cyber attacks aimed at disabling Earth's communication networks and satellite systems, seeking to isolate and demoralize the human population. Alongside these digital skirmishes, elite Empire commando units attempted covert incursions, targeting key military installations and research facilities. Their objective was clear, to cripple Earth's defense capabilities before the main force landed. Humanity, however, had not been idle. The months following the attack on the outpost had been used wisely, strengthening Earth's defenses and expanding its military capabilities. New alliances were forged with neighboring star systems, and a small but potent fleet was assembled, benefiting from reverse-engineered technology and human ingenuity. When the Empire's armada finally made its move, Earth was ready. The initial clashes occurred in orbit, where Earth's newly minted space fleet engaged the Empire's vanguard. Despite being outnumbered, the human forces fought with a determination that stemmed from the knowledge that failure was not an option. Each ship, each soldier, fought not just for victory, but for the survival of their species. On the ground, the mood was somber yet resolute. Civilians were evacuated from major cities, and emergency protocols were enacted. People across the world watched, waited, and hoped, their fates intertwined with those battling high above them. The Empire's forces were relentless, employing tactics and weaponry that had subdued countless worlds. But Earth presented a unique challenge. The diversity of its environments, from the deserts of Africa to the frozen tundras of Antarctica, provided the defending forces with numerous advantages. Guerrilla tactics, honed in the various conflicts that had plagued humanity's own history, were now used against an alien foe. Despite these efforts, the Empire's advance was inexorable. Orbital defenses were overwhelmed, and the first Empire troops began landing, their drop pods hitting the Earth's surface like a meteor shower. What followed was a series of fierce engagements across the globe, from the ruins of old cities to the depths of the Amazon rainforest. Humanity fought back with everything it had. The Empire had expected to encounter a broken, dispirited species, easily crushed and assimilated. Instead, they found a world united, its people willing to pay any price for their freedom. The battle for Earth had begun in earnest, and though the Empire had brought its fury to humanity's doorstep, it found not submission, but resistance. A resistance that would fight to the last to preserve what it meant to be human. As the Galactic Empire's invasion of Earth continued, the resilience of humanity began to shine through the despair. Across the globe, a spirit of unity and defiance took hold, transcending all previous boundaries and conflicts. From the world's major cities, now battlegrounds, to the smallest villages, the people of Earth stood as one against their common enemy. The initial shock of the Empire's landing forces had been severe. Many areas were overrun, with key defense installations suffering heavy losses. Yet, as the reality of the occupation settled, so did the determination of Earth's inhabitants to resist. Guerrilla tactics, learned and refined through centuries of terrestrial warfare, were adapted against the invaders. Civilians and soldiers alike became saboteurs and spies, striking at the Empire's forces in a relentless campaign of resistance. In the corridors of power, Earth's leaders forged a global coalition unprecedented in human history. Political and military resources were pooled, creating a unified command structure that oversaw the defense efforts. The brightest minds worked around the clock, developing new technologies and strategies to counter the alien threat. Among these, the development of EMP weapons capable of disabling the Empire's advanced technology proved a turning point, leveling the playing field and giving humanity a fighting chance. The unity of Earth's people was its greatest weapon. 
Stories of heroism and sacrifice spread, inspiring others to join the resistance. In occupied territories, underground networks emerged, providing intelligence and aid to the front lines. Citizens turned their homes into safe houses, their vehicles into makeshift transports for troops and refugees. Every act of defiance, no matter how small, contributed to the broader struggle for freedom. Even as the Empire's forces tightened their grip, they found themselves facing an enemy unlike any they had encountered before. Humanity's will to fight was unbreakable, fueled by love for their planet and for each other. Each attempt to crush the resistance only served to strengthen it, as the cause of freedom united humanity in a common purpose. Amidst the chaos of war, there were moments of profound humanity. Soldiers and civilians worked side by side to protect the vulnerable, to care for the wounded, and to keep the spirit of hope alive. Music, art, and literature flourished, defiant expressions of Earth's culture and resilience. In the darkest times, these acts of creativity and solidarity reminded everyone what they were fighting for. The resistance also began to exploit the Empire's overconfidence and reliance on technology. Cyber warfare units, staffed by the best hackers from across the globe, launched sophisticated attacks on the Empire's communication networks, sowing confusion and discord among their ranks. Meanwhile, human scientists made breakthroughs in understanding the alien technology, repurposing it for use in the resistance. As the war dragged on, it became clear that Earth was not the easy target the Empire had anticipated. Each victory against the invaders, no matter how small, was celebrated as a testament to human ingenuity and spirit. And with each passing day, the resistance grew stronger, more coordinated, and more determined to reclaim their home. The battle for Earth was far from over, but humanity had shown that it would not go quietly into the night. Against all odds, a diverse species, once divided by borders and beliefs, had united under the banner of survival. This unity, born of necessity, had become humanity's greatest strength, turning a scattered resistance into a formidable force capable of challenging the might of the Galactic Empire. The crescendo of humanity's struggle against the Galactic Empire's invasion reached its peak in a decisive confrontation that would come to be known as the Battle for Earth. With the fate of their planet hanging in the balance, Humans rallied to mount a defense that would go down in history for its bravery, ingenuity, and unwavering spirit. The Empire, frustrated by the unexpected and persistent resistance, committed a significant portion of its fleet to a final push aimed at crushing the human spirit once and for all. Their plan was straightforward, a massive ground invasion to seize control of Earth's major population centers, believing that the fall of these cities would break the will of the people to fight. What the Empire did not anticipate was the depth of humanity's resolve. Earth's defenders had prepared for this moment. Their efforts buoyed by a series of small victories and technological advancements gleaned from the enemy. The resistance had transformed cities into fortresses and countrysides into minefields. Every street, every hill was a potential death trap for the invaders. As the Empire's forces descended, they met a world united like never before. The defenders comprised soldiers and civilians alike, each person playing a role in the larger battle for survival. The skies above Earth became a chaotic ballet of dogfights and anti-aircraft fire, while the ground shook with the rumble of tanks and the march of infantry. Humanity's tactical ingenuity shone brightly in the heat of battle. Using hacked drones and repurposed alien technology, they launched surgical strikes against key enemy positions, sowing chaos in the invaders' ranks. Guerrilla fighters, moving unseen in the ruins of cities and the shadows of forests, ambushed the Empire's troops, further demoralizing them. One of the most pivotal moments of the battle came when human forces managed to capture an Empire command ship. Engineers and scientists worked feverishly to reverse engineer its technology, gaining crucial insights that were immediately shared across the global defense network. This coup provided Earth's forces with the ability to intercept and jam the Empire's communications, leaving their units isolated and confused. As days turned into weeks, the battle raged on each side suffering heavy losses, but the tide was turning. 
The Empire's initial advantage in numbers and technology was eroded by human determination, strategic brilliance, and the adaptation of alien tech. The invaders began to retreat in the face of relentless human resistance, their morale shattered by the ferocity and unity of Earth's defenders. In the final days of the battle for Earth, a daring counteroffensive was launched. Human forces, now equipped with advanced weaponry and armored vehicles reverse-engineered from captured alien tech, pushed the invaders back, inch by inch. The fight was brutal, but the momentum was unmistakably with humanity. As the last of the Empire's forces were expelled from Earth, the world breathed a collective sigh of relief. The victory was not without cost, with millions of lives lost and cities reduced to rubble. But Earth had survived. Humanity had faced down a seemingly unstoppable force and emerged victorious. The battle for Earth would be remembered not just as a victory against a formidable enemy, but as a testament to human unity, courage, and the indomitable will to preserve their home and freedom against all odds. The Galactic Empire, once seen as invincible, had been humbled, and humanity had secured its place among the stars as a force to be reckoned with. In the aftermath of the battle for Earth, the world was forever changed. The victory against the Galactic Empire was not just a triumph of military might, but a triumph of the human spirit. It was a unifying moment that transcended all previous divisions, creating a sense of global camaraderie and shared destiny. Humanity had defended its home against an existential threat and emerged stronger, more united than ever before. The Galactic Empire, humbled by its defeat, withdrew its forces from Earth's vicinity, licking its wounds and re-evaluating its perception of humanity. The once dismissive attitude towards humans had been replaced by a cautious respect. Diplomatic channels long silent during the conflict reopened, with the Empire seeking to establish a more equitable relationship with Earth. The humans, wary but optimistic, engaged, hopeful that peace and cooperation could replace hostility, Earth itself embarked on a period of rebuilding and reflection. The scars of the invasion were everywhere, in the crumbled buildings and the memorial sites that sprang up in honor of the fallen. But alongside the physical reconstruction was a deeper societal transformation. The war had accelerated technological advancement, pushing humanity into a new era of innovation fueled by the reverse engineering of alien technology and a renewed focus on space exploration. The unity forged in the crucible of war led to the establishment of a global governance structure dedicated to ensuring that Earth would never again be caught off guard by external threats. This new governing body, the United Earth Coalition, was a testament to humanity's ability to come together for the common good. It prioritized the protection of Earth and the exploration of space, ensuring that humanity would be prepared for whatever challenges the future might hold. In the years that followed, Earth became a beacon of resilience and ingenuity in the galactic community. Former adversaries became allies, drawn by humans' tenacity and the rich culture that had survived the Empire's onslaught. The galaxy now saw Earth not as a backwater planet of insignificant beings, but as a vibrant, dynamic world capable of defending itself and contributing to the wider cosmic tapestry. The battle for Earth had also ignited a spark of curiosity and wanderlust among the people. No longer content to gaze at the stars and wonder, humanity now reached out to them, establishing colonies on distant worlds and forming alliances with other species. The era of fear and isolation was over. A new age of exploration and collaboration had begun. The story of humanity's victory and the subsequent dawn of a new era became a source of inspiration across the galaxy. It was a reminder that courage, unity, and determination could overcome even the most daunting of foes. Earth's struggle and triumph became a legend, not just among humans but among all races of the galaxy, a legend of how a divided world united to secure its place among the stars. As Earth healed and grew, the lessons of the past were not forgotten, the sacrifices made and the unity achieved served as guiding lights for the future. Humanity looked forward not just to rebuilding what had been lost, but to creating something new, a world and a galaxy, defined not by conflict, but by cooperation and a shared desire for peace. In this new dawn, Earth stood ready, 
its gaze fixed on the horizon, eager to face the challenges and opportunities of the cosmos together. The battle for Earth had ended, but humanity's grand adventure among the stars was just beginning.